want to do is pew, 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 pew. And side storm your army. Point thief. I can't remember how we play this guy. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to another game of Inside Livy B's Thoughts. As she plays the StarCraft 2 ladder. That's me. Gotta check I'm that Livy B. And welcome to my channel. On the tube. <laughs> she sweat basically the whole time seeking herself. For real. In this particular game, we are up against a Grandmaster Protoss player. Goes by the name of Points Thief. But there's one thing he won't be stealing off me. And that's my candy. Ain't no one touches my candy. Shoot. Get. <laughs> In the beginning of this game, Points Thief did seem pretty happy with having just versed parting. A close call with the parting on the ladder. Not every day someone gets to play against parting. I've played against him before. He's not kind. <laughs> Never gone well for me personally. Hmm. <laughs> Have a game lesson that came down to probes as probe that though. Neato. Well, I'm sure after this game, Points Thief is gonna hit someone else on the ladder and tell them that it's not every day someone gets to play against Livy B. Dun dun dun. I don't know, that sounded dramatic, right? <laughs> I prefer drones versus pros, me too. I actually feel like Zerg versus anything is the most entertaining matchup to watch, like spectator wise. Now, the way that this game pans out is pretty macro orientated. I'm not going to go for any crazy shenanigans that you might have previously seen me go in other games. This one's just a standard macro game. But of course I'd say that because I'm Zerg. <laughs> Doesn't sound biased at all. <laughs> for, for Ron, stop. It's, I'm just speak the truth here, man. Cat vs. Mirror quite a bit. <laughs> Never seen that. Sounds really cute. Send my first overlord across the map. Second overlord on top of my natural. Scouting whether or not he's going to be throwing down that cannon rush. Or any proxies. So no funky plays coming out from this Zerg player. I'm going to play it straight up macro game. Play my cards and hopefully steal some points back of the points thief. Like the old modern Robin Hood stealing from the thief of the thief. Points thief. Return them to the rightful owner. Just going to see what he makes from this. Um, What's that building called again? Stargate. Let's see what he makes from the Stargate. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. I'm taking my third base behind this. What are you doing, shenanigans? Who's spamming the chat? He got a drone. But a drone for an adept is actually a great thing. So I'm going to go up to three hatcheries on this map. Taking my third base relatively soon. Taking two drones off of gas. Just to get that initial 100 gas to get Zergling speed. That's a Void Ray, isn't it? I thought it was an Oracle for a second. Get some map control, deny any pesky adept pressure, and continuing to scout. Lucky with my first Overlord that I sent across the map, I did get to scout in his natural wall that he's actually made a Stargate. Okay. Um, he did make an Oracle. Then he followed up with the Void Ray. Okay, I didn't... My eyes didn't deceive me then. Okay, I'm very pleased by this. Transition into the robo, no problem. So we get to scout his tech straight up without even having to sacrifice an overlord or any zerglings. So pretty handy dandy with that initial scout straight up, meaning that I know I can drone a little bit heavier, get some spores in my mineral line, and not fall victim to any oracle or phoenix pressure. Actually, I don't need that much gas. I think I'm gonna cancel one of those. But Point Sleep, he's doing the unorthodox Void Ray opening. Now I do admit, Void Rays are pretty good against Snyder's Denial. And maybe that's what he anticipated that I was going to go. I mean, he did lose his Adept pretty early and he didn't want to risk it. We're not playing against the Sewer Mermaid, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's alright. 
that's Florencio, guys, don't know who that is. We did do a best of seven against him. You can find that highlight in another video on my tube. Now, the Oracle was very much disappointed to see that there is a spore in each of my mineral lines in my main and natural. Might get some more scouting zerglings as well once my overlords pop. And now the Void Ray is cleaning up all the overlords on his side of the map, clearing up all of that map awareness and scouting capabilities. So I will have to send out some zerglings across the map, one to each potential third base. We want to know when Point Sleep will be taking that third base. It's very crucial to have this knowledge because we need to take a fourth base when he starts doing that. And sending that zergling across the map as soon as I did was absolutely crucial because now we got to see that he is taking that third base. I'm going to drone very heavily and take a fourth base behind this. I'm going to be getting all my gases. He's taking a third base. And I've decided I may actually have a little bit of time to take up to my favorite unit in the game, as everyone knows, is the Mutalisk. They're my flappy boys. My flappy bee boys. <laughs> the Mutas buzzing around the map. He activated that on the fly. That's how you know this guy's good. Pollinating all the mineral lines. <laughs> Whatever flappy boys do, you know. So we're going to be focusing pretty heavily on our creep spread as well. We want to see any incoming zealot run bys or warp prism harass or Anything that might be coming across our side of the map to get maximum scouting capabilities. Since he did deny all my overlords and he's got those void rays looming around, killing off overlords whenever they come into contact with them. Better take this base. I think he cancelled my other base. I didn't even realize he was doing that. And Point Sleeves decides he wants to use his two void rays aggressively now, denying fourth bases and picking off a couple of drones here and there where they can, which I think is. Some pretty good harassment here from Point Thief. Trying to slow down my economy as much as he can. As he knows that a 4 base Zerg is nothing to smirk at in this game. Similar to a 4 base Protoss. Actually, I could argue that 4 base Protoss is even scarier. BS! Now I'm desperately trying to get this fourth base up. These Void Rays have been absolutely infuriating to deal with. I take both fourth bases simultaneously because if he cancels one, hopefully the other one at least can get up. And finally, my spire has finished. You did, baby, I would judge you too. Which means now I can go full on muter production. Every single gas that I mine will be toward my muter bee flappy boys. And I'll be continuously spreading that creep as much as possible. I really want to kill all these as many voters as I can. And trying as quickly as possible to saturate a fourth base while focusing on taking additional gases. And once all my gas is spent in my bank, I will be spending all that excess minerals. So where is this void race? I thought I saw them peeking out here. In my zergling, so I can do some counter harassment on the opposite side of where my muters will be attacking. So that multi-prong harass to really divert the Protoss' attention will be really helpful going into this mid game. Once I get to his side of the map, Point Thief has already gone into Phoenix production. Luckily, there was only two when I arrived, two phoenixes against 22 muters doesn't really do all that well, so he has to really keep defensive. Oh, muters have been revealed, I have to... With the phoenixes, especially since they don't have the range upgrade yet. So they're not super strong, you can actually kite the phoenixes and bait them in to get close enough so that you can pick one off every time they try to engage and run away. So you'll see that's exactly what I'm doing here. He's trying his best to distract my muters for as long as possible while he gets his army in position to really defend his main base. And at this point, when his Void Rays and the rest of his army rock up to the main base, I really truly get a good look at his army composition. This is when I've realized he's actually going Sky Toss. He's got carriers in production. He's got mass Void Ray. No wonder he's making Phoenixes. I have to take absolute precaution here because against Sky Toss, it gets real dicey. Oh boy, this is going to be a bit dicey. If he defends perfectly on top of shield batteries, Sky Toss can be super strong. At this point of the game, you really want to focus on base denial. I'm going to get a double Aspire upgrades going on. Because if a Protoss player gets up to four base on Sky Toss technology, it becomes near impossible to stop. So doing the best I can on the harass, I'm trying to find that perfect window of opportunity 
to attack either his tech structures, his economy or stray units that are in production. Just the point of weakness where he'll take damage and I can trade out efficiently. So I go into the main base with his units out of position momentarily so that I can pick off some pylons and some cannons and pick off a carrier that just pops from a stargate. Like this carrier. And I'm gonna have to run away because his entire army is now <laughs> beating down my poor Muta Corruptor flock. And now when it comes to Sky Zerg the Sky Toss, it's really crucial in the early stages to get your micro correct. You don't really want to have your mutas engaging the phoenixes. You want to have those corruptors guarding those mutalists. Because as you know, phoenixes counter mutalists, but corruptors counter phoenixes. So to have the corruptors tank the damage of the phoenixes while you can add the DPS of the mutas is really the engagement you want to take as a zerg player. Then if you can actually target down the void rays with your target down the void rays with your mutalists then that's also ideal. Because Void Rays actually do bonus damage against wow. armored units with their prismatic alignment, which is exactly what your Corruptors are. So you don't really want your Corruptors engaging with the Void Rays. You want your Mutalists engaging with the Void Rays. Because they don't take that bonus damage and they trade it out quite efficiently with them as long as they don't have a mass amount of carriers there as well. <laughs> so that's why the early stage Sky Toss versus Sky Zerg is super important. I really need to slow down his production here. While all this kerfuffle is going on on the top side of the map, I try to do a Zergling run by in the middle base that he's taken as his fourth base. But he has set up a lot of defenses there now, and this is getting a bit sticky. The great thing, though, I have going for me in this game is that I have a very good economy. I have actually taken a total of six hatcheries now at this point. The six base is on its way, and once I have the gas is fully saturated there, then my gas income will be actually really nice to start banking enough resources to keep trading units over and over and re-maxing my army every time I trade out a bunch of peas. Sky Toss for my Sky Zerg. Because as you know, Sky Toss is very cost efficient, and the larger it gets, the more cost efficient it gets. So dwindling it down to a manageable number is really what you want to be going up against in the late game. Slowing down the production is a bonus. Dwindling down the army size is where the big money is. <laughs> big money. And you really want to be dwindling down the army size. The further away I can attack from a shield battery also is an engagement I definitely want to take. Those shield batteries really allow those portals units to last even longer and trade way more cost efficiently than they otherwise would if they engaged away from the shield battery. So he tries to protect his fourth base, and in doing this, there's not really all that much defenses here. He's just out of range from that, from that one shield battery and that one cannon. So I'm able to trade out quite cost efficiently here with my Muta Corruptor army. My army is dwindling, yes, but I've pretty much wiped out his entire Sky Toss army. And now I am confident to engage the Protoss' army head on. He just cannot steal my ladder points oh today. GG. Taps out. GG. Now he can go into the next ladder game and say, Oh boy, I verse Livy B. It's not every day you go up against Livy B on the ladder. I got to verse her mutas and her corruptors, and I just could not win. And he could say with a smile on his face, like he did at the start of that game with the parting. <laughs> Legit! Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. GG.